Welcome back, my little recusants, to another episode of Final Fantasy XIII. We have just linked back up with Saz and Vanille. So we are super happy to be back with them in the party. And we are going to be skedaddling up along the Crystarium with Vanille, getting her saboteur levels done. And once again, we kind of probably have enough just to check out that, but we need Dispel, you see. So we have to do a little bit of a diversion, but then we're going to try our best to just zoom along, get the roll level. We love that for us. And then just check out what the other ones have to offer. So since these are actually so little, it's kind of a good... I suppose, conversion of CP points to, like, stat gains. So we probably wouldn't have gotten as many levels going back over other bits in Saboteur at that high level. But we were able to actually get a good amount of stuff in Vanille's Ravenger. And once again, we're literally just going to zoom along with Saz and try and get the roll level. Just literally a tiny amount left. One battle will see us to Ravenger level 3 as well. And yeah, it's just time now to meet back up with the rest of the party. So they are trying to save us. We're saving ourselves by breaking out of prison. Getting preemptive strikes like there is nobody's business. And then if we're able to just do enough damage, hopefully Vanille can just take this out. And even if we miss a stag on the other one, getting rid of the healer uh, plan is definitely what we need to do. And once again, we need to be putting on Libra because there's certain spells in the Ravenger arsenal that this creature is immune to. I'm guessing it's Thunder. And that was a really good player I would have like <laughs> hopped onto the status screen to show you but yeah like we can see him doing elemental attacks so odds are Vinio probably tried to do a thunder attack and that was immune so nothing too too difficult all sorted and done with so that's really good and then we just have to make sure because we can hear the treasure chest but then it's like oh we can hear it but like where is it so we don't want to be missing out on our treasure chest, but what it actually is, is we're actually hearing it. If you look on the minimap, there's a little nook up and around the corner to the right of that minimap, and that's basically where we're hearing it. We're hearing it all the way through the wall. <laughs> and we are just getting all the preemptive strikes in the world, so it just makes these battles a little bit easier and quicker to deal with, which is nice. And then we're going to use her aura just to try and stagger both of them there. So now they're both in stagger. And if we just keep on the elemental attacks, we should hopefully be able to uh, get rid of both of these then in a single stagger. Unfortunately not. And do not underestimate them. They do an awful lot of damage. So we're going to just quickly recuperate into some war and peace. But let me know in the comments, who do you think will be my main party of three in the game going forward? Because I don't think it's that much of a stretch to imagine that we're actually like going to be eventually reuniting. So we are actually going to have all six characters and we're actually going to be able to completely customize who's in our party. I know, something that's like so, I suppose, a staple from like Final Fantasy X is that you can literally choose like what party members you have and you can swap them out all the time. Uh, but like, you know, we're what, 30 plus episodes into this and we're still waiting uh, to actually have all the characters all in the one place. But this is an amazing accessory. It's one of the reasons why I didn't want to have it go unnoticed the royal armlet which like oh my god we have a spare accessory slot for vanille let's just slot that in but the royal armlet actually gives five percent resistance to everything so even though it would be better for a tank in the exact same vein it's like well you'd rather your healer definitely survive so 
she'd be able to heal and resurrect and things like that so it's definitely not a bad thing to have and you see once you start getting all the roll levels then it just becomes a little game of okay what's actually useful on the crystarium that i would want next and obviously getting the tier two magics that's a good uh, place to start i suppose and Vanilla is so close to getting to that level 3 medic, we're just about there. And as you can see, we have some encounters on the far left hand side. Like this thing's gonna keep us out. And what's so funny is, I hear the hum and I'm like, okay, no, so it's definitely not back this way. But maybe if I just loop around, I can actually get a preemptive strike on the monsters, um, like over there. And I immediately don't, so that was a bit of a fail. But then I'm thinking, okay, is there like a door here? Where is this treasure chest? And the unfortunate thing is that it's actually right up by where the map marker is pointing us. Uh, the very rare occasion of, I would say, a very unmissable chest that I'm literally like, that it, it must be somewhere before the orange. It can't actually be where the orange is. And uh, I, was <laughs> I was stood very much corrected. But what I will say is that every single party member does have their own advantages. Like while, let's say for example, Snow and Fang, they're both the kind of tanky characters. What is this color coding? Looks like we ain't the only ones cleaning house. Could be Lucy. Could be Fang. Come on, let's hurry. Let's go get rescued. Yes, Queen, let's go save Fang, 100%. But as I was saying, Fang and Snow are both Sentinels. So they both have different benefits in terms of their other roles that are in their paradigm sets. Making a lot of Psycom guys nervous. Who are they fighting? Anil. Yeah, so now we we just have, I suppose, the synchronicities of the timelines. So, you know, waiting. good bit of video movie editing, I suppose. Showing us, okay, we're now synchronized in timelines. So as we progress, they're progressing too. And uh, we're going to meet up very, very soon. Now, this particular area, I kind of knew myself that I was going to be grinding in a really good spot a little bit later. Before we get there, we have to go get through these, but... As I was saying, like, Fang and Snow are basically identical characters, apart from their baseline stats in the Crystarium, which Snow has the most HP nodes and the highest HP of all the different characters whereas Fang has the highest attack so while she is able to use Sentinel and kind of have Mediguard like she's a totally different character to have in your party composition so even though you have two Sentinels it's like well do you want to tank loads and have really offensive characters like Fang as a commando and maybe lightning as a ravenger so do you have those but then you also have the chance to really hunker down and have two sentinels and lightning medicking it up so that um you're able to kind of recuperate safely and then with fang and vanille being both saboteurs it's like okay but do you want to lower their defenses or do you want to like slow them down make them attack less like what are you wanting to do with your various characters and as we've kind of seen in the various smaller parties that the game has kind of put us in it really does show that there is a use for every character and if you were to literally redo certain fights with different characters you could find one let's say challenging fight using lightning saz and Snow might be totally different if you were using Vanille and Fang because the debuffs and deep attacks and different things could have just turned a really powerful enemy into something that is a cakewalk. 
So I kind of have my go-to team that I do normally use an awful lot of. I kind of, I kind of fluctuate between four of the characters. But obviously, kind of coming back to it all this time later, you really do kind of have a different appreciation for the mechanics. And like, let's just examine this now. So we are basically using Fan to, because like that's the first thing you look at, you go, okay, we have the super offensive aggro character here that gives herself all the buffs to the start of combat. If you leave that to just not, you know, if you don't deal with that with Fang's Dispel, you are going to get overrun. Hope is going to more than likely die in that in that time frame because he is just not going to be able to withstand all the attacks. And now you've lost one of your medics and one of your best damage dealers because I've been giving Hope all the magic boosts. So he is the most magically offensive. So even when he is like, as you say, ravengering, he is still doing like 500. Like, for example, Lightning has a fully, well, not fully, but she's a decently upgraded weapon. And even when staggered, she was doing, let's say, 600s in the magic set. Hope was doing, no. Lightning was doing 400s in the magic set, like uh, Hope was doing 600. So she had way, way more, uh, I suppose, improvements in her weapon and stuff, and yet Hope was still, just on his raw stats alone, doing way, way more damage. And this is where Lightning casts Thunder really quickly. So when you're trying to keep an enemy in the air, that's a really handy one to kind of keep them suspended for longer. And obviously we're currently seeing certain characters being limited by the fact that they don't have the same number of ATB segments. So, like let's say for example when Hope gets four segments or when Fan gets four segments or more, like they are all going to become so so powerful because now once Hope gets four segments. He's able to do Protect Shell on a character in one turn. So that'll just be where these characters then start to excel. And like that similarly with Vanille, like saboteuring, you know, having the chance to just control them as a main character and just fire off a bunch of D-Protects in a row. So you can just prioritize, okay, I want this particular debuff as soon as possible and then after that you can kind of play around and do whatever other debuffs you want whereas the AI while really really good does kind of just stack a bunch of debuffs and hopes one of them sticks now I left a bit of this in because this is actually a very very tough fight so realistically you just have to take it one at a time buff yourself with a synergist slow them all down with slows and then just go one creature at a time and just single them down, stagger them, get one of them in the air and just take them down one by one. But as you can see, it still took like four minutes and I was like, oh, that's a long time for just one fight. So I just trimmed it down. But just focus on one, kill one, move on to the next. Um, but beyond that, that's going to be our episode for today, guys. Thanks so much for watching. And let me know what you think of the story progression so far. And put in the comments what team you would like to see in future episodes. Desperate times demand flexibility. Code white. Make my wish come true, let darkness slip aside. Hiding all the hope, marking what we treasure.